Nikki Evans. And I'm Tegan Bins. And welcome to the Boom Tunes Podcast. To Boop Tunes podcast, we're on episode seven now. Ooh. And I just clicked my finger in the wrong way and really hurt myself. Wow. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> so, concert wise, we said we didn't have any. I ended up seeing glitches like right after recording the last episode, the band that we interviewed in the last episode. And yeah, it was. Very quick. Quick? Yeah, like they were like over, 15 over minutes. Pretty oh. much just set up, played a few songs, left. Oh, right, okay. Um, they've got like this summer tour going on, which they um they said in, in the interview, they're doing two shows a day, every day. So oh. I don't blame them, but... No, and they are very good. They are proper punk, you know, short, snappy songs with political meanings yeah so i I definitely say if you have the opportunity to see them do it and the lovely people as well i will say that again absolutely sophie was straight away so happy to see me i was like oh prince (laughs) um and then i also got to see the in theaters to Metallica shows different sets because they've been doing no repeat weekends and it was streamed live from Dallas so for them it was like Friday night, Sunday night for us it was Saturday afternoon Monday afternoon Um, so it weren't um, was it live? it was live yeah Ah, yeah, that definitely counts as seeing a show then (laughs) time zones yeah it was really really good um the first night it was definitely like trialed there was a lot of uh mixing you could see they were like trying to mix it all well as they were going um and i think they were really tired i don't know the tour dates but the first night i was like oh my god they're like his voice is tired out Lars is like missing beats Mm. one of his drums is like off sounding but I think it was just that they'd done it a load of nights in a row and were tired because yeah they're they're older guys now as well aren't they and as sad as it is to see people age especially rock stars so James uh said he's just turned 60 jeez and they've been doing it 42 years now so I don't blame them for being a bit off the game yeah no but Monday afternoon, they were back to pitch perfect. Everything was great. Yeah. It, so, And I'd like Metallica. I think they're worth seeing live. Obviously, they did all the, the greats. You know, Nothing Else Matters, Enter Sandman, uh, Master of Puppets, um, So You Can Destroy, Whiskey in a Jar. Yeah, you'll have to excuse me. I am quite... My brain's a bit off it at the minute. I'm getting words puzzled um <laughs> i've been like it all week yeah um, it's i think it's that sort of like towards the end of the year everyone's in a funk mm. needs a break yeah i'm on holiday next week so that's good i get a break um let's see what else can i say about metallica lovely men the same. I mean, I know Lars is that's like the first thing my dad taught me about Metallica. <laughs> um, the before, um, well, the first stream for me had broken, so we missed like part of the first song and everything. Mm. Um, well, we, we didn't really know how um, much we'd missed on the day. We were like, it could have been half an hour. It could have been one song, you know. We, but judging by the second show we might have just missed half a song one song because there was a lot of adverts and things before well not really adverts but Metallica advertising their own stuff like they've got their own podcast coming out and 
all that stuff. And they'd um, they've set up like a charity thing, which is worth noting about. That's helping people, like essentially paying for people's education and putting money back into communities and that. Oh, that's good. It's nice to see when bands do that. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, they're just doing it to make themselves seem nice. But I feel like a lot of, like, musicians have literal money to burn. And if they're living it up lavish and they've got nothing else to do, why not put it back into community and help out? Exactly. I mean, a certain cynical boyfriend of mine (laughs) um, was like, this is to avoid taxes. And I was like, no, it's nice, guys. Slap Even if wrist. it is, at least some of it's going to charity and is going to yeah. help, realistically. Yeah, I mean, I reckon Metallica could have easily retired before we were even born. Yeah. And be fine for the rest of their lives. And, you know, that was 22, 23, or 23, 24 years now since I'm a week away from 24. Oof. Yeah, yeah, nearly 23. I know. You're old. I'm old. Oh. Everyone's old. The boys are old. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's about it for Metallica. Yeah. I mean, they hadn't changed the um, stage setup since I saw them in 2017, apart from, like, adjusting a few lights for the newer stuff. Mm. And they had, like, big red uh, red and yellow black and yellow balls bouncing around which yeah. somebody deflated and stole and I was like you know what if I were there I'd be doing that yeah just for the men's <laughs> I don't know how I feel about like big bands when they've got something so iconic with the staging and them not changing it mm. because if they've got something that works fair enough but does it get to a point where it's not worth seeing them more than once because the staging's the same. Going back to talking about Muse, the staging yeah. is similar. It was the two times I've seen them, it's similar set up with like the big animatronic thing in the back, but the animatronics are different. It was different both times, the different lighting, different lasers, stuff like that. So it's similar, but so, so different that it is different. No, um, I get, yeah. I mean, it's like Arctic Monkeys. They. I love them and I've said this before seeing them live can be boring and I get where people come from um, they, with the Tranquility Base era they did put a little bit more effort into the staging but they've only changed it slightly for this round of tours for the new album Yeah. and sometimes I feel like it's not it can't be a cost constraint especially with Metallica they've got mm. money to burn do something exciting with your staging a little bit goes a long way with staging I think it can. I do think maybe Metallica are about the music rather than the show. Yeah. I think they were also, you know, around before shows became this big extravagant thing. And maybe yeah, to them a big a round point. stage can be that. I mean, they had um, Robert the bassist he had a bit of a um if the word comes back to me um a bit of the stage light came off and he was basically literally crowd surfing yeah um yeah like he was stood on a little platform that's the word little platform yeah and he was carried through the crowd yeah and Kirk had a, a really cool guitar. Well, he had two really cool guitars, but they were basically the same but different colours, and it was basically glittery and Ouija board themed. Ooh. Yeah, it was so pretty. One's purple. Um, I can get my words out. Purple. Um, it was just so pretty. Oh, I love when they have, like, really cool instruments. I saw a TikTok of a guy, and it was like a lava lamp guitar. It was, like, Ooh. clear acrylic, and it had got, like I think it was normal water and then like antifreeze in it so obviously that it, oh. it's still that oil effect but it didn't freeze if they were transporting it or whatever but it looked insane I've got one from friend Matt and it plays awful but it's so pretty yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like a, a galaxy one but it he's like do you ever play it? i'm like no because it sounds awful but when i have my own house it's going on the wall <laughs> what else can i say then well halfway through i just kept thinking about i think it was it must have been the first metallic top i got which was a hand-me-down from my dad from yeah. a tour from before i was born and it's like tight around my arms and my neck. So I cut it up. And at the time I was like, this is so hardcore. And then I just kept thinking then, I cut up a Metallica top that's older than me. That don't even belong to me. <laughs> and I just started feeling so guilty. And I was like, oh. But then I'm like, mm, you know what? I could actually wear it now and, you know fix it up a bit i've got some stitching things you know yeah so that's if it still fits me now anyway that's pretty much it for shows um so bit of a serious moment here because we'll be talking about cancelled or criminals in bands you know allegations and that so there will be some dark topics i'm gonna try not to go into too much detail because i don't want this podcast to be like big serious sad podcast you know yeah it's it's chill we just chat absolute and have fun that's what it's about but it, it needs to be said yeah, um, it's worth mentioning and talking about, especially if we're going into depth about every part of the music industry, it sort of needs to be touched on. I feel like it wouldn't be responsible of us to not talk about it. To t- yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be um, responsible if we didn't talk about it. You passed your brain fog on. <laughs> <laughs> I passed the brain fog. <laughs> it's contagious. Right. Um, well, you passed on that seeing dead thing ability (laughs) for the context of that she points out dead things in the road while driving and now I've done it Um, what was I going to say then Um, yeah the sources of these have been really stupid and not noted down they're from various news articles some of the artists are you know legally cleared and that some of them you know we just this is stuff we found this is not what we're making up none of it's made up we found it on the internet through articles don't sue us i don't think we'll say anything that's um no if it's readily found and we're not the first people saying it i don't think it's an issue yeah Anyway, who would you like to start with? Uh, probably from the top. Let me have a look. I feel like it is good old day to remember. Yes, it is. Yes. I think um, the first one is actually all time low, and I feel like it is good to maybe touch on them, even though it's they have been legally cleared. They have. But it's it's. It's a touchy subject because they are iconic and I grew up on them like you did. But when the allegations came out, we were both like, "Mm, we're not surprised. Um, Obviously, they're legally clear, so in a legal sense, it doesn't matter. But I don't know. It still seems a bit touchy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to listen to them again. It, yeah. It's, um, like I said, th- the ones that they've cleared, you know, fine, okay, they're false, but there were so many that. Are... My theory is, you know, some of it must be true. If yeah. so much. But the legally cleared, that's just a theory. A day to remember. Yes. Um, so I believe it's about the bassist, isn't it? Yeah, Joshua Woodard. 
Yeah, and it was recently. Ish. Uh, 2020. Dress allegations. Yes, sexual misconduct. Why is it always, like, essay stuff with them? Like, to me, in general, not just this band, but most of them, it's power play. It's so much power play. It is. I mean, I've talked about it in one of my seminars in uni, and Tutor said, is there something about just playing pop punk that makes you do that? It's so strange, like, you could, like, obviously this one, it does um, say that he was involved in a a traffic accident and, um, like, when we go to speak about Ronnie Radke, some of that's being, like, transphobic and stuff, but 90% of the time it's it's sexual offences and it just baffles me. It really does. It does. Um... It's a bit of a tangent. Have you seen that guy on TikTok that says how metal is blank? Yeah. Yeah. It makes me laugh when he, he goes, like, say I saw the Gavin and Stacey one and he talked about James Corden's character and he said he was in a relationship with a teenager. That's pop punk. It's been making me chuckle, but this is not the time to chuckle. No, <laughs> this is no. serious. But... That makes me chuckle, so go find the metalhead guy from Wales on TikTok yes. if you want to chuckle. Um, yeah, so I couldn't find like details on the assault, alleged. Um, but the car crash, according to uh, the paper that I read, said that he crashed, he crashed head on into the driver's side of Bryant Gonzalez 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 so Gonzalez yeah yeah I'm, I'm so sorry if I butchered that um and he suffered massive blunt force trauma and was dead on the scene at 24 um so Joshua lost his license for that obviously it's hard to um, deny that. Did he just lose um, his license? Did he not get incarcerated or have to pay a fine? Do we know? Um, from what I saw, it just said he lost his license. Oh, so irritating. Yeah, might have been drunk driving, but I've not written that down, so I can't say for definite. Yeah. Um, and decided to pause legal against the accuser and the post was removed that's the sexual assault so he basically was like um, he didn't go through with the legal proceedings because um, the, the, the last that was um, accusing him removed the post um, but they resurfaced and he said he must act accordingly and will be leaving the tour to be with family and continue to defend my innocence. Um, I saw no update on that, so whether or not he's cleared his name or not, I don't know. I feel like he's not in a day to remember, though, anymore, is he? No, no, that was him leaving. Yeah, did he leave? It weren't, they kicked him out. What I saw, it was different depending where you looked. On the sources, yeah. Yeah. I feel like... Again, it's really difficult with the ones that are legally cleared or there's no legal legal reprimands to them because it's so difficult because, again, the, the court system is so unjust sometimes, yeah. especially in America, and it can be that there's there's people there, there's accounts there, but there's a lack of evidence and they go, there's, there's no case against it. So it could be very well that not just this guy in particular, but most of them... It is true, but they're legally cleared because there's not a lot of evidence to prove it. Yeah. Especially, I mean, Warped Tour's infamous for stuff like that, people being touched, and if you're being touched in a way where it's just you and the accused... Yeah. 
and there's no one else around and no witnesses, it's one person's word against another and that doesn't hold up. Yeah. As sad as it is, um, but again, it's difficult, especially for me when they've been legally cleared to sort of believe it fully. Yeah. So. I will hold my hands up and say I'm not the best at research. Um, I am on a waiting list for ADHD and I'm a visual learner, so I do find it hard to read like lots of pages of things. Um, so it might just be that I've done inadequate research here on like not finding the legally cleared things. Yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. It's um, yeah. it happens, and there is like I said, if the the sources that we've got are readily available for anyone to read. So yeah, and it, it's all first page of Google stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm very lucky I've got out of doing a dissertation this year, so Yeah. <laughs> Don't need to worry about doing this a lot. Although Jesus. I am a journalist, so I should but you know. Before we move on, I must apologise. I'm in my living room and Susie mm. is tip tapping everywhere and she's trying to play with me. So I've just realised that I'm quite close to my uh, my laptop microphone. So you might hear me whispering stop really quietly. <laughs> I've not heard, but then I've not got my earphones and microphone on, so there's not a lot that I'm hearing, really. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to pre-warn everyone. I mean, I'm at my parents' now, so our neighbour might come up and squeak at us at some point. (laughs) We should really not be giggling whilst we're talking. (laughs) To be fair, it helps cope. It does. Yeah, it does. It it's just up. wholesome content in between dark content. That's all it is. We're breaking up. We're breaking oh, it up. Oh. You're breaking up with me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to serious. Yes. Uh, Ronnie yep, so Radke. Next one's Ronnie. Um, I before looking into it, all I'd heard is that he was transphobic and he'd said stuff about trans people, and I not really researched much into it sort of like before now um so this doesn't really come as a surprise i've heard about it before i mean he got kicked i'm sure he got kicked out of falling in reverse not falling in reverse escape the fate yeah yeah i think that was um yeah i was gonna say drugs yeah Yeah, so oh god there's an ambulance (laughs) (laughs) i'm so sorry it's all right uh but yeah this this doesn't surprise me um, yeah. Something to do with a trans activist? Um, Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. Um, to be honest, not that I'm saying what he has said is okay. What I've seen about him on Twitter, I thought it was going to be awful. You know, it sounded like a full on attack on trans people. Yeah, same. Um, basically, what he said is just sort of fallen for right wing anger. I'd say, well, ish. What happened is he was upset at Dylan for buying tampons. He thought that she'd been promoted by them, not promoted, sponsored by them. Yeah, and she was promoting them. Um, but Tampax, you know, replied to it saying like. No, we've not sponsored her. You know. Um, or Jeffrey Marsh. Um, but he basically said it's offensive to women that trans women are promoting tampons, which... It's not his place to say. He doesn't have a vagina. No. He doesn't identify as a woman, so it's not his place to say what is offensive to women. Are you offended by it? No. No. Um, I'm not offended, but I don't think it's necessary. I yeah, mean, I get that. I mean, I know there was, there was a lot about um, trans women, some trans women wanting, uh, like, f- the female logo, you know, the, the circle with the, the down arrow. Yeah. Taken off um, feminine hygiene products because they didn't think it was representative. But obviously then a lot of trans other trans women came out and said no this is this is not fair like 
yes we're still women but you know yeah. not all women have periods there's people who identify as male who still get periods yeah you know there's people that are cis women that don't get periods like it's just it's a weird gray area topic and again I don't want to get cancelled for having an opinion but you know if you're a period haver yeah that's that's your business like it's a it's literally a piece of cotton that you shove up do you know what I mean like it's not it is gendered because obviously it women women use it but just just get on with life there's more important things to worry about than whether or not a feminine hygiene product has a, a logo on it yeah I remember that fuss on the internet yeah have you seen Alice Cooper commenting on it no um i think to an extent he's fair with it mm. but i think he has been wrapped up a bit in facebook christians mm. um he's basically like shown his age a bit he is he thinks like parents are forcing their kids to be trans a bit but he's like you know just let kids be kids if they want to wear a dress let them if they don't don't yeah. force them um, but kids, he's uh, like went on it, like if it stopped there it'd be fine but he went on and he was like oh you know kids these days they don't know if they're a man or a woman <laughs> he's like yeah. Alice shut up oh, good old Alice but I like Alice Cooper yeah um, for the most part he's good it, it always makes me laugh that I've seen a couple of TikToks of him that is like you know this old he's funny on eating cat shit. I'm really sorry <laughs> She's just distracted me. I'm going to have to put her in a cage. Um, uh, yeah, so before I disappear and put her in a cage, I'll finish what I was saying. Um, he He's like this old, like, Prince of Darkness-esque, um, you know, like, rock star. But he's actually really plain. He's been married for to, to the same woman since, I yeah. feel like, they were childhood sweethearts. have known each other years and been, he's been oh, married to the same book. woman, he's stayed faithful to her, he's like, I don't like going out, I play my concert and I go home and go to bed, and that is me, that is me. Married in 76. 40 marriage. Right, she's in jail, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I'm just yes. trying to Google whether or not they are, like, childhood sweethearts. I'm seeing they've been married for... Um, a long time since 76 jeez that's a long time yeah I can't find how long they've been together oof but yeah it does make me laugh um, but yeah back on to Ronnie it's not just the trans stuff as well Um, it looks like he's been he's definitely had um, soul um, violent indecence, harassment, yeah. homophobia comments as well. We on about Ronnie again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is. He's Ronnie. He's he's Ronnie. I I feel a bit bad about it because I do genuinely find him funny. Like, yeah. he's popped no, up on the yeah. You page a couple of times, and I'm like, he's actually a funny guy. But then you realise, actually, he's quite a bit of a... T- Fully a... T- yeah. Um, yeah, we don't condone his behaviour. No, absolutely not. Wait. Condones, like, accepting it. Yeah. Yeah. I said that and I was like, wait, ink condone when you like scorn someone. <laughs> My brain's not with it, honestly. It's fine. I'm so sorry. I should not be talking about serious subjects when I've got brain fog. Anyway, set it off. Yes, this one. I also want to tie into Scene Queen um, because obviously her song, 18 Plus, people speculate that the three beats in the middle of it is all time low obviously yeah. she said if the shoe fits wear it but the song was genuinely programmed to be bleep 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 rather than a word and then yeah. bleep it out so i think it was just a general you know it's usually three word band names that, yeah. that come into light 
but she's quite close with is it Cody from Set It Off? I don't know. I feel like it is Cody, the singer anyway. They've done yeah. two songs together when um they do they do quite a lot together, they've toured together. Um oh, and is then it, it for is Cody, yeah. Then Barbie to, and Ken. Yeah, the Barbie and Ken song, yeah. Yeah. Um and I think she's made statements about all time low and stuff like that as well. But then for her to be so close to this guy who was told with all time low recently. This year. It's a bit iffy. I mean I don't it's not on her at all. I think she's a genuinely lovely person. You know, we're off to see her again soon. Yeah. I I really like her and I don't think it's any implement on her, but also I'm a bit like I get what people are saying with the hypocrisy thing. Yeah, I mean, that's what people are most mad at with say off that the the hypocrites because the the Dan took a, a quote hiatus, um, and then they were like, "We don't condone this behavior," and then they toured with All Time Low, but All Time Low are legally cleared. Yeah, again, it's back to that legally cleared yeah. status. It's it's so difficult. And obviously we're not there, we don't know. Yeah, and I feel like maybe we should have researched into the legally cleared status. Like, is it that the people have dropped the case because they've been given cash dollar? Or is it that it has gone to a court of law and they've gone, there's no evidence to prove it, they're absolutely cleared, the name's fine? When I googled um, about the legally clearing... Or the first things that were coming up was that they are sending the person who made the first allegations to court. And I was like, this is not up to date, then, if this is not saying that they're legally cleared. Mm. Um, I tried to find, like, a timeline, but there was just nothing clear. Yeah, there's not a lot. Um... The next one's quite surprising. It might not be for some. Mm. I mean, I I knew about the the underage sort of age gappy creepy type stuff, but not the uh, not the fascism fas- fas- <laughs> fascism fascism. Mister Bowie, Mister Bowie, and I know so, you really like Bowie. <laughs> I have a tattoo of me as Bowie. <laughs> then I Google this. I will say. Although it doesn't make it okay, I think what he was doing was a, a 1975 kind of shock value thing. I don't think he fully believed it. Mm. I think he was doing it because it's like the same reason he wore dresses and things just to be talked about. Yeah, he had different like phases, it like the Ziggy Stardust phase and like yeah. sort of personas. Like you said, it doesn't make this any better. But he, from the sounds of it, he started off saying he's apolitical and mm. then changed it. And I know, because I've researched it for multiple essays at uni, his sexuality stuff, he came out as bisexual and then regretted it because it's all people would talk about and that. Yeah. So is he saying things for the sake of saying things? Mm, to sort of take away from his sexuality yeah but again it's it's difficult with him not being with us like we don't want to talk ill of the dead but also this still happened and it is a different Um, time i feel like stuff like this would not have slid no if he were an artist in this era and he was doing stuff absolutely not it wouldn't have happened everyone that met him, especially towards the end of his life, were like, he's a perfect gentleman, very nice guy. Yeah. You know, all that, very fair. Um, so I, I googled the um, fascism first because I've got a little book of David Bowie quotes and one of them is calling Hitler the first rock star. Mm. Um, so I wanted to get a bit of context to that and I ended up in a bit of a, a rabbit hole. Mm. about him like it says here having unhinged rants to journalists um, wanting far right ideologies for Britain allegedly Um, because 
I don't want to get a lawsuit from the Bowies because that will be a big one. Um, it appears no audio recording of such remarks exists. However, he effectively confirmed the authenticity of them in subsequent, if I can read, interviews and reportedly told journalists in 1977 that he was not a fascist, but rather a political. There we go. Um, but he has been photographed by Hitler's bunker doing the Nazi salute. Yeah, that is not great. <laughs> not great. It's a bit of a kick in the stomach. Yeah. See, but then Bowie. you sort of um, refer it to the Matty Healy thing. Yeah. He did what was perceived as a, a Nazi salute. I mean... He said yeah. that he didn't mean it like that. It was a part of a song. Uh, I think it was Love It If We Made It and he was supposed to be imitating a soldier and doing a normal salute and then holding his hand up. But it did look like that. And, you know, Matt Heal has come under rap. Um, he's he's done a lot of controversial stuff. It's, it's difficult. Again, I'm a fan of them. I will hold my hands up and say that I think he's a bit of a self-entitled prick. He's a Nepo baby. He does yeah. controversial stuff to be controversial because he likes it. But yeah. where do you draw the line? Yeah. Um, Bowie also possessed um, Nazi memorabilia, mm. um, which people at customs uh, of the Russian-Polish border um, seized. Um and some people that so let's see carrying books about oh he was carrying books about um joseph gobels and albert spear um but he considered them research materials for a film um he was planning about hitler's propaganda tactics so, i mean Carrying the books is different. If it's like Nazi mm-hmm. memorabilia, like the badgers with the eagle, the the swastika yeah. stuff, like genuine material, which I feel like he did with the customs officer. But the books, to me, like I'm interested in Nazi Germany. I it's like watching documentaries. Like my mm-hmm. my grandma's partner, he he has books on like Stalin, you know, dictators, stuff like that. Does that mean he's a Nazi? Or a, or a fascist? I don't think so. People can just be genuinely interested in literature and events that happened. Like I said, I'm I'm interested in dictators and stuff like that. Doesn't mean I agree with them. Doesn't mean that I like them. It's just interesting to see their mindset and how much havoc they caused and how they've shaped the world to be how it is today and stuff like politics and sociology. And if it was just the books, I'd be tempted to say, actually... You know, it's just books, but the yeah. memorabilia added on top of it, it does make it a bit iffy. Yeah. Um, Andrew Kent, a photographer, when interviewed, said that it was a long trip with very little English reading material. David was just looking for something to do. It was not a political statement. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just an interest, but then again with the, the memorabilia... When you think mm. that he lived in Berlin for a bit as well, and that was like his favorite place to live. Yeah. But then I'd like to go to Berlin because I look at it and I think, oh my god, that's a pretty city. Yeah, same. I and mean, there is I'm a lot of around it. Obsessive with my German heritage after doing the typical yeah. white girl ancestry do naked. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way. Um. I had that one for my birthday, so. So I I took to learn in German English. and and doing stuff but i i would love to go to berlin we were gonna go in december for christmas mm. but we were like mm, very touristy area around christmas with the market yeah. probably not a good idea but we will definitely be planning to go soon i mean they've got pandas there as well they do well, always a win together. we're recording when we talked about the lasses yeah i think so yeah i think we mentioned it Oh, we might not have. I think I mentioned it at the start when we uh, when we introduced that it was Bowie, but no, we um, 
No, we, we, we spoke weren't. About that off recording. Air. Okay, I just lost the timeline of today there. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, he was also accused of grooming. Um, I'll go through this really um, quickly and butcher some more names. I'm sorry. So, Dana. I feel like it's Gillespie. Claimed that she yeah. had sex with Bowie when she was 14, he was 17. And I've called out the journalist that wrote this because he put the age of consent is 16, which it is now. But at the time, it was 18. And what? Well, actually, I think I looked at the 70s and it says it's the 60s here. So it could have been actually 21 at the time. So Bowie would have been a minor as well. Yeah. Obviously, it's a bit creepy at 17 wanting a 14 year old, but. They were both minors. Yeah. So it has been made to be worse than it is. Yeah. But yeah. then, um, Laurie Maddox, or uh, Maddox, uh, claims she lost her virginity to Bowie when she was 15, he was 25, which obviously we cannot just you shake can't off. dispute that. Yeah. Um, however,. Laurie thinks of him as a friend. He, she says, I don't think her, brackets her age was a thought for him and I don't think he was hanging out with a lot of underage people. We were young then, he was 25, that is still young as well. Uh, David was not a star yet, so he did not take advantage of any celebrity status with me. I remained friends with him throughout his rise to fame and he would always check in to see how I was doing. We were friends. Is that her, you know, doing that thing where you protect your abuser? But it's it's so difficult. I mean, people say oh, it's a different time, you know, it was different back then, but it's still creepy. It's still an abuse of power. And I mean, it happens today where people aren't honest about the rage or people don't yeah. ask and it's very scary because you see 14 year olds made up and dressed up like yeah. they're in the 20s and it's difficult to distinguish so if he genuinely didn't know how old she was then fair enough do you know what I mean it's not if he didn't know he didn't know yeah but if they'd stayed friends after, I feel like maybe he did know, and it's still creepy, personally. Yeah, I mean, I see people that you know. I'm 23. I see people 18, and I see an infant. Yeah. You know, I don't see how you can look at someone 10 years younger than you, unless you're like older. You know, like. 40s kind of established adult mm. I think that's the point where you can start looking at someone a bit younger than you and start going okay this is also an adult mm. yeah. but I don't think at the age of 30 and below or in your 30s and below you can look at someone and go yes this is someone appropriate for me I feel like I I don't know if it's like a, a rule that anyone else has spoken about, but for me, if you're in your like early twenties, you know, late twenties, early thirties, anyone that has teen in their age out of order. They're not an adult. Yes, yeah. they can legally consent, but they they are still classed as a teenager. Like your brain isn't fully developed until you is it twenty three or twenty five? Twenty five. And it's so weird to think like like you said. I see like my sister. She's nineteen in October, and I still see her as an infant, even though she's nineteen. Or like when you walk with like people that street, or you interact with people, and you're like, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm only nineteen. We had a student nurse and were chatting to her and it's not that I see people as any less for being younger than me but I think no. wow I feel old yeah like you yeah, are you a literal a child and you're like oh this person will be my age and then they're like five years younger than you and you look in the mirror and you're like full of wrinkles and close to death yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no it's 
it's strange. A lot of people, especially with older artists, will grab onto that it was a different time. And yes, it was a different time, that's correct, but it still yeah. doesn't make it any creepy in today contextually. But also, most of the people I know that have gone for people like 10 years younger than then have manipulated their partners and abused them. Yeah. I've only ever seen one healthy age gap relationship. Yeah. And even then, like, I don't know the ins and outs, so there could be stuff that I just don't see. Yeah. But they seem very happy together, so I'll leave them to it. <laughs> not um, not judge too quickly. <laughs> no, no. And they are getting to the age, like, she's, like, late 20s now, so. Yeah. Um, They've been together a long time. I think if it wasn't healthy, it would have been over by now. Yeah. Um... Next up, have you still got time? Yes, I have got about 20-ish minutes. Right, yo. Um, swimmers. Yes. Um, the gist of it is Joey Armstrong had a relationship with Lydia Knight from The Regrets. Um he was 22 she was 16 um apparently not sexual but when she came out with it she made it sound like there was sexual assault coercion and just general predatory behavior according to him um nothing sexual happened it was a relationship that never should have happened really Mm. um she says it's more um It ended right before her 18th birthday, which is obviously a bit more suspicious. Um, Mm. uh, In a a statement, the call from swimmers said um, she was someone that they considered a friend. Uh, When he first heard that she was going to call Joey out, he called her and they'd met up. Her and Joey had met up months before and discussed the relationship um and that had apparently gone really well that conversation Mm -hmm. so he wanted to know what had changed um cole had talked twice with um lydia Mm -hmm. and it was going well until she made fun of his brother's car wreck um and suggested that they post about the regrets on the Instagram to prevent her going public with her accusations, mm. uh, which is when he stepped away from the situation. Um, but yeah, it reiterates they never had sex, um, but most people referred to him as a rapist mm. and called the band rape apologists. Um he wasn't a good boyfriend, but not a sexual predator, according to Cole. Um, this kind of sounds like one of the relationships I've been in. Mm. I was 17 when it started. He was... twenty, twenty-one, but like that ended right after I was 18 and then he went on to like actually groom someone Mm. um and I don't know maybe because I've been in like a similar thing I'm like that's not so bad they've taken full accountability and Joey stepped away from the band Mm. um what do you think I don't know. I feel like it's a weird one. Like, was there receipts and proof that she'd said the stuff about the brother's car wreck and, oh, post about our band and I won't go public Mm. with the allegations? If there is receipts of that, I feel like that's not great. That that does not look great on her. For what I saw, it was just statements. Mm, Yeah. It's a bit of a weird one because especially if the the allegations or whatever that she came to light with didn't specify anything about SA, then 
yeah, fair enough. He's probably a sh- he might have been a shitty person in other ways, and call him out for that. But if he's not doing SA, then I don't, I don't get why why they're being called out and cancelled for that. Personally, this may be a wrong thought for me to have. Joey's dad is Billy Joe Armstrong. Yeah. And I think Billy Joe would have spoke up and, like, publicly said that he doesn't like what his son's done or something. You know, I I don't think. But then you would have thought as well he'd stand up and say, no, my son hasn't done this. Yeah, I feel like it's a very confusion, confusion, confusing and weird situation overall and maybe that's why he didn't as his father get involved because it's his son at the end of the day and yeah he's you know he's quite a powerful figure in the rock industry or whatever but it it does look damning that he didn't defend him but also is it worth him being cancelled and his band coming under rap to defend his son from sexual oh. allegations that weren't in the allegations. Oh, this is wrong, this. I've just said, uh, I've just found this that said to, um, Green Day's front man's, oh, front man's son, I've read it wrong. So that's Joey's thingy about it all. Oh, oh this is rough, everything saying Billy Joe Armstrong's son, Joey, accused of sexual misconduct, but now there's yeah. nothing saying that Billy Joe Armstrong's like talked up about it, but maybe Joey asked him not to. Yeah. But we know Billy Joe Armstrong, if he's got something to say, he'll say it. Yeah. He's from from the music he's made and the shows that he's done and the stuff that he said previously, I feel mm. like it's very uncharacteristic for him to not say something, either in defence or you know, against yeah. his son. So I just, I feel like it's a messy situation. He probably did the right thing by staying out of it because his son's an adult at the end of the day. He can make his own bed. True. Um, And obviously just because Billy Joe's a good dude, it doesn't necessarily mean Joey is. Yeah, exactly. But you would think the apple won't fall far from the tree. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, moving on. Other artists we've been given Blood on the Dance Floor. Yeah. We all know what, what that is, Lost Profits. We don't want to talk about them again. We've got on them a bit on the last episode, but it's worth mentioning that right after the episode aired, he got stabbed. Um, Unfortunately lived. But mm, yeah. I know this is, like, really inappropriate, but if he was to get, like, stabbed again and, like, actually died... Can I listen to rooftops again? Mm. Potentially. What's the rules on it? Am I going to have to wait like 70 years until it's public domain? (laughs) We'll have to research it and come back. Um, (laughs) I'll be on my deathbed. I'll be like, put it on. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, sweet release. Um, I die as it's playing for the first time in the next years. The next one surprises me. I think yeah. we've I think we've mentioned about Mike before and Vic. Um, we did. As far as I'm aware, I don't think he has anything to do with Vic anymore. Um, not he at least publicly though. because he's got a kid now. I, as far as I'm aware, without researching, I don't think Vic has anything to do with his brother anymore. But the writing credits on the new album. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is if they started this album. I mean, I'm I'm not entirely sure what the gap is between uh, is it Texas Forever the album and this album. I feel like it is a good few years. So mm. unless they started writing this or a few songs from it a while ago, when Mike was still involved in the band. That's the only reasonable explanation that I have for that. Let's have a look. Uh, 2023, the last one before that. 2016. Yeah, so that is a good good gap between the, the yeah, allegations and, and, and stuff. It and then put it to rest when the allegations popped up. Mm. Maybe. 
I hope I hope that is the answer that he they did start writing and he's got writing credits because he he put ideas forward and did help write some of the songs on the new album before yeah. he left the band and the allegations came to light. I mean, it is only one song. Is it just the one song? Okay. Just, that, uh, Damn the man, save the empire. That makes me feel a little bit better and it does make me personally feel like that is the case. If it was more than one or most of the album, again, I would hope that it is that case, but it would make me suspicious that they have been working with him behind the scenes. Well, he hasn't been in the band since 2017, but appeared playing the drums for them in 2020. Mm. So someone's not telling the truth here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was accused of statutory rape. And soliciting new photos what, from a minor. When was he accused? Was that 2017? Yeah, mid-November. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like I need to look yeah. more into this, but my personal opinion is that he... Has, has he been like legally cleared? Has, did it go to trial or anything? Or just allegations? Not that I could see. So I don't know. Uh, hasn't been in the same... Dominance of the Empire. Appeared in a live stream. Um, I don't know about this one. I Pierce the Veil is such a comfort band for me and they did the right thing in letting him leave or kicking him out, however it happened. Um, it's, you've got to feel for them as people as well with Vic. I mean, it's, it's his brother. Yeah, so it's his as brother. As much as he doesn't like and, you know, shuns what he did, like anyone that's had to, like, go no, no contact or anything knows it's hard. Yeah, yeah, it must be. But again, from from reading this, I'm a little bit like, mm-hmm. I hope, I don't know. It's a weird one. He's got a kid now. Yeah, we don't we like don't know that. the situation behind it. We don't know if they do talk or not, or if it's just sort of like yeah. limited contact. Or I just. I'm just bringing the plate up. No, no, we're nearly done. I'll come down. <laughs> She can't see you. Good evening. Do you want to say hi to the podcast? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, Rita. Get yourself down here some pizza and chips. Ooh. Yeah, my tea's ready. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think we'll wrap up with with the the Pierce the Veil one anyway. But yeah, I don't I mean, know. I feel like, like was neck deep and they're legally cleared. Yeah, yeah, legally cleared. Um, and the guy's not in the band anymore either, is he? No, I mean we've already talked about this, and when you went to see them. Yeah, yeah. I just I feel like because Pierce the Veil such a comfort band, I'm yeah a little bit delusional and a little bit like I. I want to stay on the more positive side and think, no, they don't have anything to do with them anymore because of the allegations and, you know, they're moving on as a band and doing new things because I love them so, so much and I don't yeah. want them to... Susan! To to be bad people, to have to stop listening to them. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. So, as it stands recording, we don't know if we'll have a Kathy show. Yeah. Um, we'll put it here. If there is. It's the cafe show. Do do do, maybe. <laughs> um, and then we'll say thank yous. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you next month, um, Vicky will be a year older. Ah, uh, old. <laughs> uh, I've got a bunch of like maybe concerts, but nothing. Yeah, I think anymore. we've got two in September. Uh, the last right. one is on the 20th, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to talk about that one, both of them, yeah. Who shall we have as the artist of the month? Ooh. Hmm. I feel like it, it should be a tie between Glitches and Metallica because we could give it to Metallica, um, mm. but they're a big band. Yeah, do they need give, the press? Yeah, give the press to the underdogs. I say the glitches. The glitches. glitches. Now, with McFly, we forgot to do a who will win in a fight, didn't we? Oh, we did. I think the winners of the month before was Enter Shikari again. Yeah. So, McFly or Enter Shikari? Enter Shikari. Yeah. 
And I've already asked which is who would win, and that would be into Shikari again. Yep, so, so reigning well, winners. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> For the third month in a row. Anyway, <laughs> so we'll see you next month. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tegan. Yes, thank you, Vicky and Kathy. Mwah. Oh, before we go, Mosley Sounds Radio will be playing our episodes starting next Wednesday, which will be the 30th. I think at two, I might be wrong. This episode will be out the day after, so ignore that. Um <laughs> I don't know if it'll be weekly or monthly there, but you'll see it on the socials. Yes, exciting. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.